So today's topic is covering the fairly simple operation of enhancing an unenhanced Apple IIe. If you have an unenhanced Apple IIe, first thing you'll want to do, get yourself one of these. This is an Apple IIe enhancement kit. Quick unboxing here. So what we have here is the Apple IIe Enhancement Kit from Reactive Micro. And if we follow the directions on here, what we do is... Uh, whatever. Take a look at reactivemicro.com. That's where you'll get these guys from. But what's in the kit should tell you just about how easy this project is. It comes with four chips in this nice little package. This long one here is the 65CO2, a ROM chip labeled video, and two ROM chips labeled EF and CD, and uh, obvious jokes about installing a CD-ROM in your Apple II, uh, you can insert them here. And that's the depth of the enhancement kit. It's four chips that you slot in on the logic board. It also comes with a couple of stickers to put on your keyboard to show that it is now an enhanced 2E. It's hard to tell if these are reproductions or if they're original stock, but either way, it's just a little sticker that says enhanced. You put that over the light on the keyboard, and everyone should be able to tell from the outside that yours is now an enhanced 2E. How do you tell if an Apple 2E is enhanced or not? From the outside, if it has this sticker here, very clearly labeled enhanced over the power light, then you're good to go. But because this is a sticker, over time these had a tendency to pop off, or the adhesive will kind of turn to goo and people's curious fingers work their way under it and peel that sticker off. So the second easy test is to open it up. If the big chip in the middle of the board is a 65CO2, then you know you have an enhanced model Apple IIe. If this is instead a 6502 without the C, then you have an unenhanced Apple IIe. An enhanced Apple IIe could come into this world in one of two ways. First, it could be born as an enhanced IIe, as this one was. Again, looking closely at the model number of the chip itself, it is a 65C02. This is also a later revision board, because instead of having two ROMs here, this has both of those ROMs in one higher density chip called CF. This started out its life as an enhanced 2E. So this is the board that I'm gonna be working with today. First off, it's an earlier revision and has both the CD and EF ROMs. It is a 6502, not the 65CO2. So this one is still unenhanced. So putting it all together, I have my unenhanced logic board, a chip puller, the enhancement kit with the three ROMs and the new CPU, and the instructions from Reactive Micro. And most important, let's not forget the enhanced sticker. So first we're gonna locate the CPU. It's obviously the long one on this, on this package, and it's the one that says 65CO2. Now, on the logic board, this is your CPU. It'll even show on the board, a little silkscreen label here, 6502B. I'm not sure exactly what the B stands for, but this is the 6502, this chip here. So let's go ahead and pull that. I'm not a big fan of the chip puller, but it does work to go straight up off the board without bending any of the pins. 
so I'm saving the chip on some recycled conductive foam that I got with some other components. It's a good way to protect it from getting static shocks from being handled. And uh, it's also a good way to kind of store these nice and flat for later use or selling on eBay. The next thing we need to pull is the video ROM. That's this guy here. Again, nice and clearly labeled in silkscreen on the board and on the replacement. Now things get interesting because this isn't labeled as video ROM on the chip itself, only on the logic board. You can find the video ROM part number here. Part number on the board is 3420133 and on the chip 3420133-A. To keep it straight from the CD and EF ROM, so you can see the part numbers there are 3420135 and 3420134. So the chips have a different part number, even though they look pretty much identical once you've pulled them off the board. So if you ever need to refer back to which one is which, you can either put a little piece of tape on them and write on there, or print out a label like they've done here with, uh, with the kit, or just compare it to what's on the logic board. So we're taking the CD-ROM. And the EF-ROM. And I'll hold on to these for later use so that I can unenhance this 2E if I want to, or for use in testing one that maybe has a bad ROM or a bad uh, CPU. So we reverse the process, take the CPU off of the kit, make sure that the notch on the CPU lines up with the notch on the socket, otherwise you're going to get something, uh, something bad happens. That's all you need to know. So it's just a matter of lining up the pins to the socket and it just clicks into place. Repeat with the video ROM again find the notch and the notch slot it in nice and secure Now with this one, I've got a leg that doesn't want to quite go in, so I'm not going to force it. Don't want to push it too hard and bend the leg or maybe break it. So I've just got to kind of walk it around until all the legs are straight and into the socket. And it definitely has a different feel now that it's ready to go in. I may have just bent the leg slightly as I was handling it or as I was pulling it off of the foam. That kind of thing happens. But you again have to make sure that you don't bend or break any pins because just like reversing the direction of the chip we get some unfortunate results. Give everything a good secure touch. Make sure it's all in place. Just to double check that you've got the CD-ROM in the CD-ROM slot and the EF-ROM in the EF-ROM slot. The video-ROM is a different size so it won't go anywhere but here. And then that the CPU and all the other chips notches are lined up with the notches on the board. Which brings us to the reason why I wanted this 2E to be enhanced in the first place and that's the mini assembler. The Mini Assembler exists on the 2 Plus and on the Enhanced 2E and later 2E Platinum, but for a brief time, simply it wasn't there in the ROMs on the Unenhanced 2E. I was very disappointed to find this out after I did some hardware tinkering and managed to blow out my Enhanced 2E. 
I believe I've narrowed the problem down to one of the 7400 series logic chips, and I'll be replacing that in a future video. I'll also show you how I tracked that down using the logic probe and some documentation I found online. Well, that's it for today. I hope everyone is enjoying these videos. Please find me on Patreon at patreon.com slash retroconnector. If you want to contribute to making more of these and maybe get some spiffs along the way, subscribe on YouTube and on iTunes. And otherwise, like, thumbs up, five stars, etc., etc. Thanks for watching.